TV Sports presents college football action as the Fighting Illini of Illinois take on the Wolverines of Michigan. Hello again, everyone. Larry Adderley, Jim Branstetter on hand for Michigan football. We have, well, we should have an offensive show here today. Tony Eason, a junior college transfer at quarterback, completing 62% of his passes for Illinois. Steve Smith, an emerging quarterback for Michigan, having a great game against Minnesota. I expect maybe 35, 40 points. You're absolutely right. We have two high-powered offenses here. Illinois throws it well. They have outstanding receivers. Michigan, with their great running backs, run it well. But my own theory on the game is, that it isn't going to be the offense that makes a difference. The team that plays the best team defense is going to win this game. I think it's something we're going to take a look at throughout the game because we know that the offenses can score. It's the guys that keep them from scoring that's going to wind up on top. And perhaps in a like junior college transfers, <laughs> and there are a lot of them here with Illinois. We'll see as they are ready for the kickoff now. And we'll get a chance to see the Illinois offense rather quick as they won the toss, elected to receive, and Haji Sheik will kick off for Michigan. A line drive that sails about the three-yard line, picked up by Wilson. And he gets it back up over the 20-yard line before Carlton Rose can catch it, along with Carl Tech. Illinois first and 10 at their own 23-yard line. Offensively, you can see the way Illinois will line up, and they have junior college transfers. They Watch certainly for Mike do. Martin and Oliver Wilson as receivers. Most of their skilled people are from junior colleges, and we'll get into that whole development and why it's such an emotional issue later in the game. He's in the throw right away. No, he's going to run because nobody's home. Out of bounds, 42 yard line. Michigan defenders fooled by that as he's in. Went to the offside away from all of his flooded backs and receivers, and nobody was there defensively. Oh, well, we talked about team defense and how important it's going to be in this game to stop the offense. That time, very simple. The outside tackle, Tony Osmond, as you see the Michigan defensive lineup, just didn't get contained. And Wilson, uh, rather, Easton broke contained, got outside for a big gainer. First down, Illinois 42. And receiver completed to Oliver Williams, 17, knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line by Tony Jackson. Two plays and two long games for Illinois. The key to the play is the fact that Jerry Burgay, the cornerback to the sideline, lets the receiver run right by him. Tony Jackson playing the free safety gets over there late, and it's a big reception. Michigan's going to have to get a big pass rush today because Illinois will throw. As you can see up front offensively, Illinois doing a good job. First down, Michigan 25-yard line, Illinois on the move. In two plays, they have gained a bunch of yards and a running play with Daryl Smith gets only a couple more. Second down and eight. The statistics on Tony Eason, and you can see what a sensational passing year he is having. One of the junior college transfers we are mentioning. Thomas in motion to block for Smith. First down inside the Michigan 15 yard line. sent Calvin Thomas in motion. He got to the corner and turned it up and made a good block to spring Daryl Smith. Well, the key is Michigan comes with the blitz. Illinois picks it up. Smith then makes the good decision to get outside and around the corner since Michigan was blitzing up the middle. That team defense concept, Michigan gambling here early, trying to get the good rush on Easton by running a blitz and they catch him in a run. 14-yard line, first down, Illinois. Quick start, fullback, dive to about the five-yard line, Calvin Thomas. Great blocking up front, and Thomas is excited. Good average, but not many yards gained rushing because, of course, 80% of the Illinois offense is passing. 
Kelvin Thomas is 5'11", 234 pounds inside trap, and when he gets ahead of steam up, I'll tell you what, he's tough to bring down. Michigan's defense really being tested here early by Illinois. Second down and two. Joe Curtis is close to a first down. I think he's got it. He does. Once again, you take a look at Michigan up front. For the most part, the defensive linemen are getting rolled over. Illinois controlling that line of scrimmage. Can't let them do that. That's part of the team defense we talked about at the head of the show. The team that is able to stop the run, make the big play defensively, is going to have the shot to win it. A first down for three, making a touchdown for Tony Eason with a great fake, and he rolled out to the weak side, and again, nobody was home. Illinois out on top, 6 nothing in the opening minutes of this game. Second time in the first series, they break contain. The fake left, nobody is out there. 79, Clay Miller, 89, Carlton Rose should have had contain on the goal line, and they just never got it. Never got contain, and then it was over as Eason had absolutely nobody to beat to get in the end zone. He made a good fake, too, on the inside handoff, but he was going all the, all the while on the rollout of his own. Mike Bass to attempt the conversion. And it is up and over the net into the crowd and good. Illinois takes a 7-0 lead. The fake comes this way, right at the camera. Michigan going for the fake, but there you see 89, Carlton Rose. Second time, first uh, series, uh, first not let you get beat on the goal line by your quarterback contained. Last week, Owensy did it in the Minnesota game, and Illinois takes an early 7-0 lead here in the first quarter. Fast to kick off for Illinois. And he sends one to Stanley Edwards, about five yard line. Stanley is hit and knocked down right about the 20 yard line. Very good tackle by Brady. Seven plays, 77 yards, and the big one, that 33 yard pass from Eason to Oliver Williams, putting Illinois in front in the first two minutes of this one. Michigan, big yardage, including the touchdown run by Easton on the first try. So Michigan from its own 20-yard line, Wolfo Edwards and Steve Smith, the quarterback. Anthony Carter split out to the left, but it's Wolfo going straight ahead and for short yardage as the tackle is made by 76, John Janata. Offensively, that is the set for Michigan most of this year. Stephon Humphrey's missing a couple games with injuries, but he's back. Receivers in the backs, that's been it. Almost all he's getting some running action, and Craig Dunaway, some at tight end, all the way with Norm Best. On second down and eight. The option, Smith cuts into a crowd and gets it at least to the 27-yard line. Squarek is there. Heaven is there. Inside linebacker from Illinois, Jack Squirek. He's been a three-year starter in there. You can see why Illinois likes him. Gets to the football. He's always looking to make the tackle. He's always moving forward. There's uh, not a whole lot of lateral movement or backward movement. Two things to mention, Larry. On both occasions, they've split Anthony Carter wide as we take a look at the Illinois defensive set. And both times, Michigan has run away from Anthony's side. On third down and two. A surprising pass, and it's complete. Anthony Carter right at the 40-yard line. Tackle being made by Charles Armstead. But the ball was thrown at the shoe tops of Anthony, and he made a falling catch. Well, Illinois coming with a blitz. Stanley Edwards gets enough of a piece of the linebacker, Squirek, to give Smith time, and then a nice catch by Anthony. They're singling on him on the corner. Anthony makes a deep out cut, 13 yards down, doesn't square it off real well. 
but the defender is not there in time. Smith throws it nicely in the only place it could have been thrown not to be intercepted. Michigan gets the big first. A 12-yard gain, first down, 40-yard line. Again to throw. Carter wide open and hit by. Anthony ran right away from Charles Armstead. It's a 7-6 ball game. Bo said before this game, he said, I'm going to cut Anthony loose. He's going to return kickoffs. He's going to return punts. And I'll tell you what, Anthony Carter in single coverage is what Illinois has given him, is going to be wide open all day. A deep post cut. He beats the defensive secondary man, Armstead. Armstead is in a junior college transfer. Anthony's got three yards on him, and nobody's going to catch him when he's that wide open. Haji Sheik to convert and a chance to tie the score. It's up. It's good. And with 10.53 left first quarter, we've got one going here in Ann Arbor. It's Michigan 7, Illinois 7. <laughs> Kirby Wilson is deep to take Haji Sheik's kickoff, and it's a high one that sails into the end zone. That'll be all. First and 10, Illinois at their own 20-yard line. On both occasions early, Illinois has been covering Anthony Carter one-on-one, -on -one, a deep post, and Steve Smith puts the ball out there beautifully. Anthony, with such great hands and great speed, is able to make the catch. You know, we talk so much about Anthony, and here's a look at Michigan scoring drive going 80 yards in just two minutes and one second. But Steve Smith should get some credit for making that good pass. A 60-yard pass play to Anthony Carter. Tony Eason will try to respond. Oh, has he got time? Complete, but the hit is made almost instantly. Ben Needham dropping Joe Curtis. One of the things that allows Easton enough time is there's only a three-man rush. That means there's eight men in the defensive secondary coverage, and Needham is back there. His first action in a couple of weeks makes the real big hit. Take a look at the passing offense of Michigan. Not as prolific as Illinois, but very effective. Second down and eight. Curtis has it, and he ducks under Gergash. Short of the first down, about the 29-yard line. Larry, Michigan mixing up their rushing. Uh, that time, they rushed five guys. Uh, the secondary coverage only rushed only three. Trying to shake them up inside to get some kind of pass rush to confuse the offensive line of Illinois. Third down, a yard and a half to go. Curtis has it. He dives over the 30-yard line. Senior Joe Curtis. From Chicago, Illinois, is the Illini first down their own 32-yard line. Team that plays the best defense, you said, Jim. So far, neither team. Well, Michigan got hurt in the first drive by big plays, and three defensive mistakes really hurt them. This drive, it appears they're playing it a little bit more conservatively in the sense that they're not giving up that big play. The defensive backs are deep. On first down, he's in the throw. He's got his man, and it is incomplete. Intended for Oliver Williams, and almost intercepted by Jerry Berge, Bergey. As the ball bounced around under the coverage of Tony Jackson. They're throwing it right into the teeth of the coverage. Jackson at free safety is able to come over from center field and, and make the hit. Now, you'll see how deep they're playing here. And you see Williams make the cut into the zone, but Jackson reacts to the ball well. When it is there, he makes the good play defensively to break it up. On second and 10, a short pass is complete for the first down, and he gets away. Miguel de Oliver eluding a couple of tacklers and tacking on some additional yards after he got the first down with a pass. De Oliver only had eight catches coming into the game. Uh, Michigan has been susceptible to the tight end pass. 
And here it's just bad tackling. Both Bourne and Burgai overrun the ball. And then Burgai just trips him up, or Oliver might have been off to the races. 45 yard line of Michigan, first down, Illinois. Better make a couple more sandwiches. It's going to be a long afternoon, it looks like, as both teams have been able to move the ball in the opening minutes. Eason on the reverse for Wilson. And they got a picket line for Wilson. Needham finally makes the tackle on Kirby Wilson, but it's down near the Michigan 15 yard line. Michigan gambling with the blitz. Geargash, number 50, will get to Eason, but just a hair late as he hands it off to Wilson, who's got tremendous speed. And again, Illinois breaks contain with a guy with Wilson's kind of speed. You know, you just you can't catch him when he's got that picket line. He's 9-7 in the 100, and you give him that kind of room, and he's going to make some yardage. 19 yards gained, first down, Michigan 16-yard line. A quick drop, and Eason has his intended receiver. Gergash wraps up Daryl Smith. But that's about the 11-yard line. Smith had 26 catches for three touchdowns coming into the game. Same kind of pattern that... Minnesota used last week to hurt Michigan. The back simply running out of the backfield, getting about two yards deep, deliver it to him, and then let him use his speed to get away. He got five. It's second and five. Smith gets an opening, and he's down to about the five-yard line, and that should be a first down. Darrell Smith, the junior from Los Angeles, catches him and runs with him. Once again, Michigan coming with the blitz. Up front, Illinois doing a good job. Geargash is handled by the guard. Smith cuts it back over the vacated hole that Geargash tried to run through. Gets good yardage on the goal line. First and goal at the five. Not a bad afternoon for Tony Eason. Five out of six. He would have thrown for the touchdown. He could have, but it was so open he ran in. Michigan will no doubt try to protect that flank, remembering what happened to them last time. But Curtis breaks it outside and in for the touchdown. Good cutback by Joe Curtis, and Illinois goes back on top. It's 13-7. Boy, when, you know, we talk about the team we're playing the best team defense. Uh, it's just a great move by Curtis. Bumps it outside. There's Needham. Now, he lets the contain get free. And you've got to contain those people on the line of scrimmage and not let them bounce outside. Twice. It's happened twice. Illinois scored. Part of that crusade, I imagine Mike White, the Illinois coach, has talked to his JUCO transfers and told them that Bo Schembechler doesn't think they're very good to have in a program. And these young men are out to prove that they are a helpful addition. Mike Bass sends up the conversion. It's good, and you can make it 14 to 7, Illinois. On level, you can see he bounces it outside, and again, contain is broken when Needham gets beat, and then really all he's got to do is sneak in with about three yards to go. All he's got to do is dive, and that's what happens is Illinois, second time they get the ball, come down and score and take a 14-7 lead. Bass with his second kickoff of the afternoon, and it sails this time to Anthony Carter's six-yard line. And look out! Anthony couldn't quite decide to go inside or back outside again, and Zerbo made the tackle on him, but it's way out near the 40-yard line. Anthony returning the kick. It's a good block on the wedge. There's the crease, cuts it up. Now here's the indecision. And then he runs into his own blocker and is caught by the backside pursuit. Had he been able to break that crease there, he might TD. Michigan was unable to move the football, so we pick up action later in the quarter. On a draw play, up the middle goes Calvin Thomas, and he gets pretty good yardage until Gergash can make the hit. Out about the 28-yard line. He again 
of six and leave them second down and four. It's the kind of thing that can happen, Larry. You're so concerned about the pass, your linemen really tee it up, get ready for the rush, and they can hit you with a quick draw. Oliver goes in motion on second down. Little screen pass is complete to Smith, and he's got the first down behind a wall of blockers. Tony Jackson finally makes the tackle, but it's out to the 40-yard line of Illinois. Michigan again coming with a three-man rush. There you see only three rushers. The linemen head outside, and then you get the good blocking, the wall there. And then you get Smith, who's got great speed, good running ability. With that many blockers, he can get some yards. On first down, Eason decides to run. There isn't much there. Gergash reacting to it, along with Clay Miller, 79. And they knock him down after a gain of about two or three. Once again, there really is very little pressure at all on Easton. He's having all day to throw. And you can see inside that jersey, he's got that flak jacket on. And uh, Mike White doesn't want anything to happen to this guy. He's pretty sturdy, though, at six foot four, 205 pounds. From Walnut Grove, California, Tony Easton. He was close to 2,000 yards passing coming into this game. He's way over 2,000 yards now. It's second down and seven. Got his man Smith again, loose underneath the Michigan linebackers, and Smith is close to a first down near the 50-yard line. Gergash and Burgai tackled him. It is first down, Illinois. Smith, one of the leading receivers in the Illinois team, and he is a back, and that's one of the reasons Illinois is so successful and why Easton's completion rate is up there is because he does throw the little dump passes, but with a guy with uh, the speed that he has at tailback, he's able to do that and get good yardage. First down, Illinois. Right at midfield. Sideline route is complete to Williams. Great catch. Tony Jackson and Burgai hit him at the 21-yard line, but Oliver Williams hung on. 30 yards on the play for Oliver Williams. They're singling up on the outside. Burgai, top of your screen. He's beat, but Tony Jackson's over from his free safety spot center field. Just arrives too late. That's great timing by the Illinois pass offense to get it there before Jackson can arrive. Williams had 28 catches coming into the game, five for touchdowns. He's already got a handful of catches, and that one makes Illinois dangerous again on first down. Incomplete. Threw that one a little short intended for tight end Miguel de Oliver. Well, it is the beautiful day it looks like. Sunny and 48 degrees at kickoff. We might nudge up to 50 before it's over, but as soon as that sun begins to fall, it'll cool off. It's hot enough right here in the stadium with the kind of offense Mike White and his Illinois team is generating. Second down and 10. At the Michigan 21-yard line, Eason drops one off. Tackle made immediately by Carlton Rose, but immediately is too late in this case. They've got good yardage. They flood the zone, and they run a back out of the backfield underneath the linebackers, and Eason just dumps it to him. He knows he's got eight yards right there, and if, if the running back can do anything, he'll have about two or three more. and a yard. What an afternoon that is. Nine out of 11, and you're not out of the first quarter yet. Calvin Thomas tries to put a first down, and he is very close to making it. He got it. Oh. And Calvin himself signifies, I got it. The Illini faithful that have made the trip from Champaign are having a 
a good time of it here this afternoon as Illinois offensively has been super impressive. The problem is that Michigan defensively has not been able to figure him out at all. A first and goal at the nine yard line. Boy, they have been here before, but he still got himself a yard gain. But once again, he broke contain at the line of scrimmage, the end of the line of scrimmage. The reverse, he is outside the defensive end. Now he gets to the nine, he starts to make some moves, and Burgai hung in there real well along with Bourne and stops him for what could have been a little bigger gain. Tony Osmond was over there at that time, too, and that is a good sign. Osmond is the one that really has to protect on that side. It is second down and goal at the seven. Open man in the end zone. Touchdown. It's Gerald Smith. Illinois puts its third touchdown on the scoreboard. Daryl Smith, another one of the junior college transferring back, gaining 1,000 yards on the ground. Simple. He just beats Robert Thompson to the corner. Same pattern they threw earlier on a second down and uh, eight, and he got eight of it back. And this time he just goes into the end zone nearly untouched. And Eason, when he's got a guy that wide open, drills it right between the twos on his uniform. Mike Bass measuring his kickoff point. This guy's going to be tired. <laughs> It. A minute 10 left in this first quarter. It's 21 to 7, Illinois. Take a look, Michigan with the blitz. Boren coming in there, but Robert Thompson, number 99, there just did not cover the, the receiver. And Smith, all alone in the end zone, makes the catch. Illinois, three for three in possessions, and they're ahead, 21-7. Fast to kick off again for Illinois. Edwards and Carter at the goal line for Michigan. A line drive. They're trying to avoid Carter, but it gets to Anthony anyway at the eight-yard line. However, the Illini are able to get there and their coverage a little better together at the 28-yard line. They stop Anthony tackle. Took a little longer this time to go 77 yards, 10 plays, but the result the same. Amazing Illinois offensive display as they are converting every opportunity they get. First down, Michigan. Beck slot side, the tight end straight ahead. Short yardage over the 30-yard line, pushed back by the right side of the Illinois defense. One of the things I think Bo would like to see happen is that Michigan holds on to the ball, plays a little ball control football, uh, and, and not give Illinois' offense a chance to, to have the ball. They're three for three on possessions right now for touchdowns, and I'm sure Bo would like to take a while and grind out this touchdown drive. Second down and seven. On the option, they're all over. Steve Smith, Squarek is there. And Don Thorpe, number 96. Steve did not have a chance at all. Squarek coming on the blitz. Started at outside linebacker last year. This year, moves inside and has done an outstanding job. There, you see Stanley Edwards didn't have a chance. Two guys to block. And Squirek ran through the hole vacated by the pulling guard, uh, Kurt Becker. And that's the end of the first quarter. Larry in Illinois is looking like winners. This is there ahead, 21-7. We head for the second quarter. and sorely in need of opening up their offense on third down and 11. And Steve Smith tries to run out and does not. He loses a couple more yards in the scramble. Fourth down. 
down and 14, and Don Bracken will have to kick it away as Steve Smith discusses things with Gary Moeller. Well, as we talked at the head of the show, the team playing the best team defense. Right now, Illinois has got it. Puts on the good rush. Steve Smith unable to scramble out with all those people coming after him. in second punt of the afternoon. Mike Martin is back at the 34-yard line of Illinois. A little rush by the Illini and a great kick by Bracken. Drives Martin back and he drops it at the 26-yard line and covers up. And he had to cover up because there was a tremendous rush coming down by Michigan's 55. And I'm going to have to find that one, Jim. Almost a big break as he drops the ball and then wisely falls on it because if he tries to pick it up, he might have gotten knocked off the ball. Big break for Michigan. But really, field position, Illinois back at their own 26, doesn't mean much in this game. That was Larry Sweeney, 55, down on the coverage, and he really buried Martin just in case they were thinking about a run back. First down, Illinois. and doesn't stop throwing. This time a little swing pass outside. Doesn't get much out of Joe Curtis's reception, however. And the crowd appreciates the fact that Michigan finally stopped an Illinois offensive play. There you see Curtis, 22 receptions this season, averaging 6.5 a reception, but the idea that he gets the ball a lot with running room is the key. Second down at 11. Really about 10 and a half. A little screen pass to the Oliver. Caught from behind. Good coverage by Winfred Carraway. And the crowd, 100,000 strong, getting a little excited. They don't like being behind by 14 points. And we're just starting the second quarter. I don't remember the last time Michigan had three touchdowns scored on them in the first quarter. Big play defensively for Michigan. If they stop once, it'll give them some confidence. Third down and six. You can see Eason trying to yell instructions to his wingers. They're having trouble hearing. Eason going to run. He got the first down. They gave him too much room and too much time, and Tony Eason took advantage, and it's first down Illinois. You are exactly right on the too much time. Eason at 6'4", 205. He's got good running ability. He's a big, solid kid. But Michigan, again, coming with a three-man rush. Now, there are going to be areas open up. Caraway and Hammerstein get caught up inside. Contain is broken. Easton holds the linebackers with that quick little fake pass. Down and out of bounds. Marion Bodies helped off the field. Jerry Burgeye replaces him in the Michigan defensive backfield. First and 10, Illinois, at their own 37-yard line. Got too easy on the blitz, but no, it's a complete pass, beautifully thrown to Mike Martin, all the way down to the Michigan 25-yard line. Martin had 555 yards of reception last year, a 17.9 average, and he got more this year already. Eason shows you why he's the quarterback he is. Hits Martin right on the dead stride. Also, after he knew he was going to be hit. Take a look at the secondary. Tony Jackson, right of your screen, is the man to watch. He's late reacting to the ball. He's got to get over there quicker, and I'll tell you, Easton is hitting the seams. 38 yards on that play. The Illini knocking on the door again. First down, Michigan 25-yard line. Good rush on Easton last time. He was sacked as he delivered the ball. It still works. He lobs one. Touchdown. Daryl Smith was in between everybody and just didn't hang on. Beautifully thrown ball. Absolutely. You know, Eason has thrown every kind of pass we want him to throw today. Here he lobs one up, a little finesse, has it right in his hands and just drops it. Uh, Smith doesn't usually drop it. He's one of their best receivers. He's a back, but Eason threw that ball exactly where it should have been thrown. He throws the long one under pressure. He zips the short one in the end zone for a touchdown. 
And he lobs one and should be 14 out of 16. On second down and 10. A little fake draw, screen pass to Smith. Carlton Rose wraps him out of bounds, but I think he's got 10 yards on the play. All depends where they spot the ball. It is first down at the Michigan 14-yard line. Once before, I saw an offense like this. It was uh, Minnesota came in here. They lost the game, but threw the ball to their backs and the flares and out to the sides all afternoon and frightened Michigan. The only thing I think that's comparable to this offense would be somebody like Brigham Young. Eason's going to throw it probably 45, 50 times today. First down, 14-yard line. Pumps once. Throws intercepted. Fair guy at the goal line. And out of bounds. At the 16-yard line, Jerry Burgeye with just what Michigan needed, an interception. Tony Eason makes the only mistake he's made today, an out-and-up cut to his back. He does not see Burgeye back there waiting. Now, Burgeye comes up right here, makes the nice interception, playing that quarterback, waiting, looking, and then makes a good return and gets it out of trouble to the 16. Michigan to the big play defensively, and that's got to pick him up that they stopped Illinois even though Illinois drove. 28 to seven would not look all that good early in the second quarter, but now Michigan has to put together a drive. And they're gonna have to go 84 yards. Stanley Edwards will get some right up the middle. First down, Edwards breaks it out to the 28. Interesting thing, Larry, I think the crowd here has sensed, you know, that, hey, we're in a real, life or death battle here and they're getting in the game every play they're going to be yelling on now life or death battle they're in trouble let's <laughs> face it down 21 7 and illinois is seemingly unstoppable it's first down michigan they've got some room for smith to throw he's going to run the option wolfolk on the pitch good cut by wolfolk over the 50 in Illinois territory. Mike Heaven makes the tackle. Well, that's the option play, and that is the classic option. Butch Wolfolk, you see, fourth in the nation in rushing, but the key is the pitch. Steve Smith comes down. He has the end blocked. The end cannot get to Butch. Now he's got the room with world-class 9-6 speed in the 100. This guy at 205 can get some yardage, and that's the way the option's supposed to work as Michigan breaks contain. 25 yards on the play, 46-yard line of Illinois. What a great game this is. If you like offense, you've got all you can want today. Steve Smith gets time to throw for Carter. He got him. And Anthony stayed on his feet. Absolutely amazing. As Armstead tried to throw Anthony down, and Anthony just went with it and gained another four or five yards. The ball is not thrown that well. Credit Wolfolk, a good block to pick up the blitz. Kind of a floater, but Anthony shields the back with his body. Gets up, makes the catch. Now watch this. He throws him like he's going to throw him down, and Anthony gets by. It's almost like he threw him in the end zone. Now here we'll, we'll be able to see Anthony shield him with his body. The ball's underthrown. Watch Anthony slow up, get his back in the way, and then this is just Anthony Carter. Our first down, six-yard line. Wilco cuts back inside, gets it to about the three. Very good tackle put on Wopo by Dennis Bishop, 28. And a real good cut by Butch because there wasn't anything there but white jerseys. Anthony is quickly moving up into the yardage, uh, career yardage marks in Michigan. He's got very little to catch Jim Mandich, who was an All-American tight end for Michigan in the late 60s, early 70s. 41 on that pass play that Anthony just caught. And on second down from the goal line, Smith gets it to the one. He wanted to do something else with it, but Thorpe got in there, got an arm on him, and hauled him down. It'll be third down at the goal line. We said Michigan had to do something with this drive, and that 41-yard pass play to Anthony Carter has given them a chance. Mike White watching and reading, no doubt, something about Michigan tendencies in near the goal line. Not a time to be reading the newspaper. 
He can't be comfortable with his lead now. Carter in motion on third down. Steve Smith gets in by fighting right through the tackle of 57, Darrell Bird. Touchdown, Michigan. I'll tell you what, that's, that's a great run by Steve Smith because there wasn't anything there. And from a yard out, he's hit. And Smith gets in running through Bird, 6'3", 220. And Smith at 6'191", just runs through Fangoni and Bird and gets into the end zone. That's just a great effort by that young man. Haji Sheik will attempt a conversion. A chance to get Michigan within seven. coming down and here you'll see Smith is caught at about the two there's Bengoni and there's Bird and here is just power and determination to get in and that gets Michigan to within seven of Illinois 21 14 9 27 left in the first half Sheet forward to kick off for Michigan, and he sends one into the end zone. Wilson will try to run it out. Kirby Wilson is dropped at the 15-yard line. Burgai is one of the first in to hit him. Bostic is one of the next, and Harris is also there. 84 yards, six plays. Boy, in the paper, that will look like a simple quarterback plunge by Steve Smith, but it was not your average one-yard run. And it came at a time when the Wolverines needed it. Now Illinois starting 16-yard line. Complete to Murphy and knocked out of bounds 20-yard line. Or Thomas, rather. Cal Thomas. Second down and five. Michigan changing it up up front a little bit. There are three interior guys now, Hammerstein, Caraway, and Osmond trying to get some kind of a rush going. They try the draw play, and a penalty flag is thrown. Calvin Thomas for short yardage. Mike Boren, Paul Gergash on the tackle. Let's see what the flag is. The guess would be holding. It is against Illinois, and is, that's the first penalty of the afternoon. The officials probably too busy keeping score here, too, to throw penalty flags. That might be the only thing that can stop the Illini. Drop it back at the 11-yard line, where it'll be second down and 15. Inside, Michigan's linebackers severely tested. You saw Gergash take that one step back because he's so worried about the pass, but then meets the block and makes the tackle, and he was also being held. Eason's got Smith and he's got a couple of yards. Tripped by Boren, but out over the 20. Good pattern in that Geargash had to cover two people. One was way outside, the other one was right here. Smith gets it, and then Geargash cannot make the tackle as he overruns the ball, and Boren comes in, gets some help from Carpenter and Bostic. But that's the kind of pass offense it is. It puts your defense in a pickle. You got seven or eight guys out there as receivers, it seems like. Third down and four. 22-yard line of Illinois. A little lob pass incomplete. Burgai made a dive for it. 
Didn't quite get there, and we may see an Illinois punt for the first time this afternoon. The key is the coverage on the screen. Michigan figures it's going to be a screen, and it's almost intercepted as Per Guy is over there with the intended receiver, and he's just waiting for him, sitting on his hip pocket. And the Michigan people here are beginning to think, hey, maybe we can stop him. Anthony Carter back at the Michigan 35-yard line. Chris Sigourney back to punt from about his own 10. Pretty good average for Sigourney, and he hits a nice spiral that drives Anthony back, and it gets a great Illinois bounce. Anthony couldn't make the catch, and it is down at the 11-yard line of Michigan. Michigan was unable to move the football, so we pick up action later in the quarter. one left in the half. Illinois gets the chance to go on offense again and they get great field position. And, and knowing Mike White, you don't think he's going to play any conservative kind of football. He's going to be throwing it up. And this is a situation where if Eason throws a mistake, Michigan can turn it into a big play for them going in and half. Joe Curtis shifts back, then goes in motion right to where he started from. Boy, Jim, you called it. Right on. First down pass. Michigan's in the game with only three down linemen. There are four linebackers and four secondary backs. Now, Needham just stands back in the hip pocket and knows that Easton's going over the middle, hides behind the defensive line, steps in front of the ball, and makes the big play. That's the danger you, you live with when you throw it like that, and everybody knows you're going to throw it. You can throw the mistake and let the other team back in the game. Ben Needham got airborne at the 10-yard line, diving over Tony Easton, and he accepts the congratulations of his teammates now on the sideline. Michigan looking for a chance to convert its first and goal at the Illinois 9. Time out to clear some of the paper off the field. Defensively, Illinois giving up more than Michigan, although it looked like Illinois would change the stats around the way their offense was taking care of the Michigan defense in this one. Now it could be a tie score if Michigan can convert this opportunity after the Needham interception. Smith looking, got it, touchdown. Craig Dunaway. One play, nine yards, and there you go, it's 21-20. Well, a smart play too because Michigan has been hurt with the blitz, so what do they do? They go to a straight rollout pattern to negate the blitz, Dunaway comes free behind the safety. A nice pass by Smith, a nice catch up high. So Michigan's right back in it. Thank you very much. Dennis Let's play Bishop. football. <laughs> Dennis Bishop, the defensive back, doing the only thing he could do, and that's knock Dunaway down and hope the ball comes loose. It did not. Craig Dunaway, the junior from Pittsburgh, makes it a touchdown and a one-point difference in Ali Haji's this conversion. The crowd tells you that he does, and with 3.29 left in the first half, it's Michigan 21, Illinois 21. Haji Sheik will kick off again. And he sends one right out the back of the end zone. No chance for a run back. Let's pick up the action later in the quarter with Illinois in possession. That's Greg Bakey, the center, Troy McMillan, and Mike Carrington, the two guards. Dennis Flynn and Bob Stowe, the tackles in this Illinois offensive set, and they are protecting their man, Tony Eason, allowing him to have this kind of afternoon. On second down and 10, wide open, and curling inside Mike Martin as he got 15 more. Carlton Rose made the tackle. Jerry Burgeye was there, but Mike Martin gets an Illinois first down. 
Eason gets the time to throw, he's going to complete him. That's as simple as that. That's part of the team defense we talk about. Ball at the 25-yard line of Michigan. First down, Illinois. A little unsure about where they should be. The backs are shifting around. But it doesn't matter to Eason. He's got his man. Kirby Wilson and a touchdown saved by Keith Bostick because Wilson made a great little move and almost sprung it for six. Wilson, another junior college transfer from Pasadena Junior College. Brian Carpenter on the coverage, overruns the ball. Wilson able to make the turn up and Bostick over from his safety position. That's the Illini knocking on the door again. Larry, I tell you, this one might be a 52-48 thriller. Well, I wouldn't want to be involved in a close finish with this Illinois team. They just do not need much time to move 60, 70, 80 yards. At the seven-yard line, it is first and goal. Incomplete. Tried to get Smith right in between Reeves and Burgeye, and he almost got it there. Well, great reaction by both Reeves and Burgey. He had the seam open, and Eason, we've seen him through all kinds of passes, zips this one in there, but there's the good reaction by both Michigan players. Good play defensively. Looked like Jeff Reeves got a left hand on the ball, I think. That may have been the reason. Second down and goal. it to the five and that's all look all the time but Michigan was not fooled well the Wolverines came with a blitz he read it and figured there'd be some room in the middle you see Needham Thompson Geargash Miller all of them in there knowing that uh, you got to get this guy down man if you give him a chance to throw something's gonna happen but they certainly have the field goal opportunity if this down should not get them the five yards for the touchdown. Come on, please. Curtis goes in motion. Eason rolls out. Lobs it out the back of the end zone when everybody was covered. And it is fourth down and goal at the five. And looks like Illinois will go for three. You know, Larry, the, we saw something there happen. Ben Needham refused to let Eason get outside. He did not break contain where he had done that earlier in the half. And because of that, he was forced to throw it out of bounds and not pick up yardage for the touchdown. So Mike Bass is called upon to try a field goal, and this one will be a rather easy attempt from the 12-yard line, 22 yards in all. No good. Escapes with a break as Bass misses a 22-yard field goal attempt. A minute two left in the half of a 21-21 tie. Not only that, but it's got to give the defense a knowing, hey, we gave up the yard, we got tough and stopped them, which they haven't been able to do a lot of today. Now my guess would be a conservative Michigan offense. Michigan's chance and I would guess a conservative play here in the final minute two seconds so that they do not give Illinois a chance to tack more points up although maybe they'll gamble on 80 yards themselves which will folks flips a couple of tacklers and gets it out to the 35 yard line quick little 16 yard gain for Butch Wolfolk Took only seven seconds. On the delay draw, they get some uh, good blocking up front. The rest is up to Butch as Michigan goes back to the hurry-up offense. No huddle for the Wolverines. 
Steve Smith looking to run out of a pass formation, and he does. Across midfield and down to the Illinois 42-yard line. Steve Smith, first down, Michigan. And that didn't take very long. 41 seconds left on the clock. Michigan's got two timeouts left, so they're in pretty good shape at this point. There goes the clock. There goes the Wolverines. Incomplete pass intended for Brockington and thrown a little bit short. I think a smart move in the sense that Steve Smith goes away from Anthony Carter, where they've been going all day. You don't want to mess up the chance of getting a field goal and going in at halftime with a lead after being down by 14 points early in the in the second quarter. And uh, I think uh, it's wise to go to the tight end or possibly look for Vincent Bean or Fred Brockington, somebody other than Carter who might be just single covered. Steve Smith got a handful of plays, no doubt, from the sideline, comes back in and looks at second down, 42-yard line of Illinois. Long throw for Anthony. Out of bounds incomplete. About the 12-yard line. That play used up six seconds. But now it's third down and still 10 yards to go. They're giving Anthony the outside. Smith throws this pass well. Yeah, it was incomplete out of bounds, but he threw it over the outside shoulder. No way that pass could have been intercepted. If Anthony does make the guide, you know, then you got a good first down. But that's the way to throw those long ones deep down the sideline, over the outside shoulder. Carter is split out to the right. Vince Bean, blank left on third and 10. play again and it's wide open. Steve Smith will go the distance. Forty-two yards right straight up the middle as the receivers went outside and so did Illinois defenders. You know you talked about Illinois coaching and scouting as well as they did against Michigan. How about Michigan? Knowing that Illinois safeties are both going to the outside looking for Bean and Carter when Steve Smith turns it upfield, there is nobody within 25 yards of him. He goes the distance. Great play by Michigan. Good run by Steve Smith. So much for my conservative play in the final minute and 20 seconds. I'll take that back. As Michigan goes 80 yards to score. And Haji Sheik gets an extra point added on and with 19 seconds left in the half it's Michigan 28 Illinois 21. Oh you, you know Larry this is such a good call because everybody is out to the sidelines Smith's got that good 4-6 speed we've said faster than Anthony Carter in the first 20 yards of a 40-yard dash and you give him that much room with that much area hey that kid's gone. Sheik's fifth kickoff of the first half is a little line drive that will run some of the clock down but give Illinois good field position. Kirby Wilson is tackled at about the 25 yard line. Tackle made by John Lott. And there it is. Only five plays to go 80 yards. Of course that helps when Half of the distance is the 42-yard touchdown run by Smith. His ninth touchdown rushing, his second today, he has thrown 12 touchdown passes. Even with 15 seconds left, don't count Illinois out. I just don't believe these guys are this good offensively. They'll do anything. That's complete to Curtis. They got 10 yards. Jurgash and Rose make the tackle. On Joe Curtis. They'll stop the clock at nine seconds until they set the chain again and Illinois calls timeout. Mike White wants to think it over. <laughs> 21 out of 
28. That's a good afternoon, and he's only halfway through. He's in on first down, wants it all. And it is intercepted at the Michigan 20-yard line. Jerry Burgey, second interception of the half, and another saver for Michigan. Hunt, they go down a straight fly pattern with number 17, Oliver Williams. And Eason just throws it up there for grabs. Burgey playing a deep center field, just has a beat on the ball and goes for it, gives Michigan two seconds left for the 28-21 lead. And you wonder, is Bo going to let Anthony go deep and throw it up to him and try to get 35 in the first half? Why not? I'm all through guessing conservative. Two seconds to play. The ball is at the 17-yard line for Michigan. Smith gets time. He lets one go for Vincent Bean. He got him. That'll be all as Bean fell down inside the 40-yard line at the 36 of Illinois. Not quite enough, but what a gamble. And what a first half. Michigan 28, Illinois 21. A most entertaining first half. There's never been one like it in an Illinois-Michigan game. That many points put up on the board. Really the big plays have saved Michigan after Illinois jumped out to that early lead. Uh, Illinois led seven to nothing and Michigan came right back. Steve Smith went to Anthony Carter, single coverage, deep post pass. Anthony makes a fine catch, goes 60 yards for the touchdown, becomes a career leader, breaking his own record, and at that point it's tied up at seven. But Illinois then really roared back. They scored two, made it 21-7, and the first quarter wasn't over. Little Daryl Smith getting open in the end zone for this Tony Eason pass. 21-7, Illinois. But amazingly, Michigan had something to come back with. Well, they got two interceptions, which helped. One set up a touchdown. Uh, another one got him out of the end zone, really, as Illinois was threatening. And then, with less than a minute left, Steve Smith on the quarterback draw goes 42 yards. And at the end of the half, Michigan all of a sudden had a 28 to 21 lead. As Smith goes his longest route, 42 yards from a run from scrimmage. And we're about ready to start the second half as we see nothing but offense. 20 first downs for the Illini and the first half stats. And we expect the second half to be similar. A 21 of 31 half for Tony Eason. Just amazing. Mike Bass sends a kickoff deep. And it's Anthony Carter, about four yards into the end zone, starts out, stumbles. Gonna have to turn on the speed, but he's got it. 25-yard line and out of bounds, Michigan first and 10. Good run back by Anthony Carter. On the next series of downs, Michigan was forced to punt, so we move ahead to action later in the quarter. 22-yard line, first down. They try a running play, finally. Curtis gets a little bit. He had 16 running plays in the first half. You know, we talk about Michigan's rush. You know, it's poor, but against the run, they're very tough. Uh, you can see it, Boren, Giergash, uh, Caraway, they're really sticking in there tough against the run, but it's the pass rush that has hurt them. They've got to develop some kind of pressure on Eason. Second down and seven. Eason's got his man, the Oliver, and the tight end is up over the 40-yard line before Jackson and Bostick knock him down. Miguel the Oliver. Once again, Eason, a lot of time to throw. Waits for his tight end to come clear underneath, just a little dump pattern. He beats Giergash, who is one-on-one -on -one with him, and. Herman gets blocked, and then it's the safeties, Jackson and Bostick, that have to make that. When you get a receiver that deep into your secondary that your safeties are making tackles, they're open. It's also first down, 44-yard line of Illinois. A little underthrown that time, intended for Darrell Smith, and he couldn't hang on, incomplete. Those short passes are part of the reason for Eason's statistics being so good, but we have seen he can throw the long one, too. Michigan defensively running 
linebackers are getting isolated on backs one on one. And whenever you're in that kind of situation, the defense is at a disadvantage because your backs are running at 4-6, 4-5 speed. Linebackers aren't that quick. Second down and 10. Mike Murphy, the fullback, changes position, as does Daryl Smith. And that one thrown right into the ground under the rush of Hammerstein. He's in threw poorly for perhaps the first time this afternoon. He meant to lob one out in the flat, and he just couldn't let go of the ball soon enough. The reason is the rush. You see Hammerstein right there in his face, forcing Easton to throw it earlier. Uh, Michigan again, trying something defensively up front, running a game. Hammerstein, the middle guard, looped all the way around outside the tackle. As Michigan's offense gets a word with Gary Moeller as Tony Easton goes back to work. On third down and 10, the Illinois drive stalling. Maybe. And it does. Incomplete pass thrown poorly again behind the intended receiver, Mike Murphy. It's fourth and 10. Illinois' punter, Chris Sigourney, out for the second time this afternoon. Only the second time, although the last time we saw him, it was a 63-yard punt that Anthony Carter lost in the sky, and the bounce enabled it to go deep into Michigan territory. And Anthony is back now at the 15-yard line. Sigourney will kick from about his own 33. End over end. Anthony's got it, 17-yard line. And he breaks the seam. Anthony Carter heading outside. One man to beat at Sigourney. And he got him. Sigourney pushed him out of bounds at the 24-yard line of Illinois. Bo Schembechler said he was going to turn Anthony Carter loose. And uh, Anthony's limping a little bit as he comes back. But uh, he didn't limp at all on the return. And the key was the first wave. He gets a good seam. And once he gets through that hole right there, he's got two men to beat. One of them is Sigourney, who's got an unbelievable angle on him. And Sigourney really does all he can do as Anthony just barely misses getting around the corner and knocks him out of bounds. A 59-yard return for Anthony Carter. And Michigan knocking on the door. Stanley Edwards straight up the middle and inside the 15-yard line. Hanging on, 57, Darrell Berg. Larry, once again, if Stanley would have cracked that, there wasn't anybody deep in their secondary. Illinois is bringing their safeties right up on the football, much like Illinois or Minnesota did last week. And if, like Steve Smith in the first half, if they can break a seam in the middle with those safeties up on the ball, there's nobody back there. Nine yards for Edwards. It's second down and one. And Stanley jams into the middle again and gets the first down. Big plays making the difference. Long touchdown pass to Anthony Carter as he goes back into the huddle and gets the cheers of the crowd because his 50 has given Michigan this kind of field position. A first down at the Illinois 12-yard line. Make it 13-yard line. Steve Smith floats one for Norm Betts, incomplete. Said early to, to Betts and really overthrew him. The problem is, they come with a rush. It's picked up right there by Wolfolk, but Steve's getting more pressure from the outside, has to throw it early, if he'd had a little more time, Betts might have come open deeper in the corner. Second down and 10, Anthony Carter splits out to the right. It's Wolfolk and Edwards in the eye behind Steve Smith. A lob for Anthony, got it. Touchdown, Michigan. That 
that's number 28 in his career for Michigan for Anthony Carter. One-on-one, -on -one, they come with a blitz. Smith throws it up beautifully. You just can't cover Anthony one-on-one -on -one like that. And Armstead's getting an education here this afternoon. He's a junior college transfer. And Anthony, a junior out of Riviera Beach, Florida, is just teaching him that uh, Juco football's nothing, pal. You're talking the big time now. Maybe the best there is. 34-21. Haji Sheik sends it up and makes it good with 9.25 left to play third quarter. It's Michigan 35, Illinois 21. Haji Sheik be Wilson at the goal line for Illinois. He cannot get to it until it gets to the back of the end zone. Anthony Carter puts Michigan ahead 35-21. The blitz is coming with the safety. Their single coverage one-on-one -on -one in the corner. Anthony right now has the step. Smith throws it beautifully up in the air. That's his 28th career touchdown. That's a Michigan record. And the Wolverines on Anthony's punt return of 59 yards that put him in position go 24 yards in just four plays using a minute on the clock with Anthony getting it on the other end scoring the TD. Illinois back in possession 20 yard line first down Daryl Smith goes in motion and Eason gets a complete one to the Oliver who is pushed out of bounds 35 yard line Robert Thompson gambling on the interception didn't get it and Bostic had to make the tackle on Miguel de Oliver de Oliver looks hurt right now but he, he made a good catch it'll be coming right at you Robert Thompson really does a good job as coverage just two weeks ago Thompson had surgery on his hand and you see Dove just got there a little bit late de Oliver is at that size he's about 6 4 2 10 runs a 4 6 40 and Towson might be the only linebacker on Michigan's team can stay with him. A first down on the 15-yard gain, and that should have been complete at the 40-yard line, but it was not. Dropped instead by Oliver Williams. Second and 10, Illinois. Does it look to you at all like Eason in the second half is a little bit tentative throwing the ball? A little bit more so than he was in the first half? Two interceptions may have worried him a little bit, and he may... He looks a little more careful about where he's throwing. Instead of just winding up and ripping it in there, he's kind of aiming it, kind of like a pitcher trying to aim the ball. A day for revising record books, and these two teams are doing it this afternoon. 56 points so far, and we've got nine left in the third quarter. That completion works out to the 40-yard line. Mike Boren makes the tackle. McAvoy makes the reception. Coming over the middle to the tight end, a little drag pattern. They clear out the zone, and the tight end just kind of sits there, waits for the ball. Eason delivers it. That's the kind of pass that they've gotten. Boren takes a late hit from his own teammate, Geargash, and he's shaking up. Third down and four, Illinois, at their own 41-yard line. pass incomplete. Mike Martin tried to shoestring it for a yard gain or so. It does not work. It's fourth down and Sigourney will have to punt. The Michigan defense shut down Illinois. Well, Illinois has run just about every pass pattern I think they could run in the first half and here in the opening of the second half. And Michigan's defensive linebackers are beginning to get a feel for what they're trying to do and what patterns they're getting into. And they're able to read them before they develop. Now, if you're Sigourney, how do you kick it away from Anthony Carter? Well, you can try to kick it over his head, and you almost did at the five-yard line. But Anthony manages to get five-yard return out of it, just diving ahead to the 10. 50 yards on the punt, and a beauty by Sigourney. And Carter really got spun around down there. down Michigan not great field position inside their own 10 yard line actually and they 
try Lawrence Ricks and get a little opening. And Ricks manages to land at about the 18. A gain of eight for Lawrence Ricks. This has worked rather effectively with Stanley Edwards and with Butch Wolfolk. And the blocking pushes the Illini back and spreads them apart. And Ricks is able to get the good gain on first down. Second down and a little more than a yard. What an afternoon. Thought he had a great one against Minnesota. Anthony Carter's having a better afternoon. Lawrence Ricks turns it up inside. First down, Michigan. Tackle is made by Mike Heaven, the freshman from Delray Beach, Florida. But too late to stop Ricks from getting the first down. at the 23-yard line. Michigan moving it out from about its own nine and a half. Shen Beckler looks on. Smith goes to the option, runs right behind Edwards and up to the 30-yard line. Smith, the ball carrier, for a gain of six and a half. Now, this is the kind of offense Bo really wants to run and be successful in the second half. He's got a 14-point lead, but hold on to the football eat up a lot of the time. Don't let Easton and Illinois have a chance on offense because they have really been successful. Although Michigan really, Larry, if you look at it, has shut them down from no points from the first quarter on. On second down, Stanley Edwards tries to find some room and gets only a yard or so. It'll be third down and two. Illinois defensively is gambling with most people up, and then they drop back their defensive secondary at the snap of the ball. But there are times when the Illinois defense will have 11 men on the line of scrimmage. That's what happened when Steve Smith caught him and ran that 42-yard touchdown at the end of the first half. To keep this drive moving, the Wolverines need two. Third down. Option. Smith has got it. He lost the football. But Norm Betts has got it. At the Illinois 45-yard line. If you're going to fumble, fumble in the direction of the blocker in front of you. Good heads-up play from Norm Betts. And, and, and part of the reason that tight ends go down the field is because they have one to get the fumble and two to get downfield blocks. There you see Illinois defensively. They're all caught up inside. And you see if Steve Smith gets by one, he's the only one left. But he fumbles and bets there going for a downfield block. Johnny on the spot. That's not a mistake. That's not a stroke of luck. He was in the position he was supposed to be in. 24 yards on the play. First down Michigan at the Illinois 44. and Smith tried the quick pass to Stanley Edwards. It was well covered. John Benagoni, the linebacker, over covering Edwards and a little bit of a blitz on Steve Smith. Makes it second down and 10, Michigan. Actually, a lot of a blitz. <laughs> That's where they were lined up with 11 men on the line of scrimmage. Five and a half minutes to play. Third quarter, it's 35-21, Michigan. Illinois with a 21-point first-quarter blitz. And they really threatened a couple of times in the second quarter, but Jerry Burgey intercepted once at the goal line to save, and they missed the field goal on another opportunity. Again the blitz, but Smith gets this one complete to Edwards. And he's out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Charles Armstead ran him out of bounds, or rather... Edwards' own momentum carried him out of bounds. Same play to this side. They ran it a play earlier. This is the way to beat the blitz. You run a back out, isolated on a linebacker. Steve Smith, under pressure, just delivers it out right at the camera. Stanley Edwards with a good over-the-shoulder reception. And then he just gets it upfield and starts rolling. Good play on a blitz to make Illinois aware. Hey, don't do it too often. We can burn you. 
You got a good idea of what happens to the quarterback, though. Steve Smith had no idea what happened after he let go of that one. Buried as the ball was on its way to Edwards. First and ten inside the 30 of Illinois. Lawrence Ricks gets the handoff and gets nine yards down to the 20. From the 29 to the 20, a good cutback by Lawrence Ricks. Yeah, and, and there really wasn't much there. Illinois defensively up front really got a lot of penetration. Take a look at the offensive line. There is penetration as Bubba Paris misses his block. Stanley Edwards picks him up. Then Ricks makes the good cut outside as they were angling down. Good play by Ricks. He's the one that made the yardage. Again, it's Lawrence Ricks. He's got the first down, diving near the 15. Lawrence Ricks doing that straight upfield running that Jim Becker likes so much. And when it's combined with the kind of blocking that the Michigan offensive line is giving Ricks, you get the time-consuming drive. Four and a half minutes to play in this quarter, and Michigan has marched from its own 10-yard line down inside the 15 of Illinois. Problems for Mike White. First and 10 on the option. Steve Smith, he's got an angle, he's got a touchdown. Stanley Edwards has been carrying the ball, and, and we don't talk a lot about him as a blocker, but he is the guy that gets the original fake. He runs through the line of scrimmage, staying out in front of Smith, and then he makes the great block on the safety right there to get him into the end zone. That is uh, a block on Mike Heaven, and uh, Steve Smith ran it in, but give credit to that offensive line and a nice block from Stanley Edwards. Aji Sheep trying for Michigan's 42nd point of the afternoon. He got it. 42-21. Ground level. You'll see Edwards. He takes the fake, runs right ahead of Smith. Now watch. He doesn't throw. He gathers. Now he sees Heaven. Just shoves him out of the way. And that's what clears it for Smith into the end zone. Good play. Well blocked. Michigan out in front, 42-21. Haji Sheik for the seventh time this afternoon sends Kirby Wilson to the middle of the end zone. And first and 10, Illinois at the 20-yard line. Illinois was unable to move the football, so let's pick up action later in the quarter. 34 yards on the punt. It's the 42-yard line of Michigan. First down. That's in motion. Edwards, the ball carrier, diving ahead to the 45. And that's about all. But that's three. Second down and seven. Again, look for a time-consuming drive. Keep it on the ground. Take a little more time between plays. You don't have to hurry up to that line of scrimmage. The three-touchdown lead, I'm sure Bo's not going to get too fancy, and he'll only throw if he has to or he sees something really wide open. Keep the ball out of the hands of Tony Eason. A little reverse action, Anthony Carter. Gets a block from Paris on the far side and crosses midfield, first down Michigan. Bubba Paris came back and threw that block that sent Anthony around the corner. Also, a good block by Kurt Becker, 65, the right guard. Pulls out, then comes back, runs right into the defensive end and knocks him down. Had that defensive end been on his feet, he might have been able to push Anthony out wider and you'd have had a little bit better kind of a situation defensively. Here it is again, 65, turns around, runs right into him. The blocking up front, you see Illinois all coming this way. Anthony goes the other. First down, 46-yard line. Penalty flag is thrown. Anthony Carter jumped offside, so you can erase the completion to Butch Wolfolk. That'll be against Michigan. Anthony slaps the thigh pads. Didn't mean to do that, but he's jumped too soon. Under either an ankle or a knee, and that's not good to see. Butch is, of course, Michigan's all-time leading rusher. Over 1,000 yards this season. 
penalty stepped off back to the 49 yard line of Michigan will make it first down and 15. Butch comes out Lawrence Ricks goes in a tailback. Well played game from that respect just the two penalties a holding call against Illinois and this illegal motion call on Michigan. And we're almost at the end of three quarters of play. yard line that's short of a first down but it makes up most of the yardage it'll be second down at about three a deep out pattern they're very concerned about Anthony getting deep they come with a blitz single coverage Smith delivers the ball again beautifully on the out cut thrown down and away so nobody can intercept it the only guy that can catch it is Anthony Carter he did and Michigan gets it back they're just now looking at a short down with a short second down play. Smith is 10 out of 16 on the afternoon. Dunaway in motion. Stanley Edwards trying to get the first down. He does not. Gets maybe a yard. Illinois reading that one very well. Bishop, Gregus are both there. Third and one. By the time they snap the ball for the next play, there will be less than a minute to play in the third quarter. <laughs> Lawrence Ricks straight ahead. And he is at the 35-yard line. That should be first down. Squirtick makes the tackle for Illinois. front Michigan just blowing people off the ball all they need is a yard Rick's going right at it holding both hands on the football short yardage play Lawrence Rick's getting some action because of a tender ankle it appears from Butch Wolfolk is doing a job the Wolverines 35 yards away from the Illinois goal line first and ten <laughs> to jump that time. Pitches back to Ricks and the whistles blow and there is no play. Ferrari and Grigas were both there in on Smith but the pitch was away and that's too bad. Could have been a very big breaking play. They call the offsides against Michigan too and, and I don't know whether Bo likes that too much because it looked as though Illinois jumped. Steve Smith is smiling. Something you can afford to do when you lead by 21 points. And the call is against Michigan. Apparently they saw some motion that drew Illinois. Two wide receivers in, Carter and Bean, and you wonder, maybe Vincent Bean might get a shot at it here. They know that they're looking for Anthony. First and 15. That's the kind of afternoon Steve Smith has had, plus a 42-yard touchdown run and a one-yard touchdown run. What strike! On the option. Smith cuts inside, cuts back, runs away from the man and gets the first down. Smith got the 15 and more. Armstead finally stopped him after a 19-yard gain. Well, it's the kind of gamble you take. Minnesota, or rather Illinois, on the line of scrimmage. Good blocking at the point of the attack. When Smith gets beyond the line of scrimmage, he's got nobody there. When he runs through Butkus's tackle, it's up to the safety men to get him. And that's Armstead. And that's the end of the third quarter with Michigan having a scare early as they lead it 42 to 21. Steve Smith having a good rushing afternoon. Got 19 on that one. First down. 21 yard line of Illinois. We open the fourth quarter with the option again. The pitch goes to Ricks and he's run out of bounds. Inside the 15 at the Illinois 14-yard line, Willie Young wrapping up Lawrence Ricks. Good option play. Smith down the line of scrimmage. The end comes up to take him. The good pitch to Ricks, and now he's outside on the corner. Illinois came in here, rushed 
one quick points up on the board, and that got Michigan going. From that point on, it's been Michigan's game. They're a little slow in this huddle, too. I think hurries them out so they don't get another de delay of game penalty, which they got the last time. Lawrence Ricks up the middle. but he didn't split it and go the distance. Somebody got a hand on him, and Ricks went down. Got the first down, but it's short of the touchdown by a yard and a half. Good blocking at the point of attack. When Ricks gets the ball, Stanley Edwards, the blocking back, comes through free. Stanley was probably more surprised than anybody. Watch it. Give it to him again. Stanley is free and clear. He jumps over and misses the block on the back, but Ricks gets through there. No problem at all. Michigan knocking on the door. First and goal at the one-yard line. Vince Bean is the man in motion. They run the other way, and Ricks carries it right in. No doubt about it. Touchdown, Lawrence Ricks. Michigan ups the lead to 48-21. Once again, blocking at the point of attack. Edwards kicks the end out. Ricks with one yard to go and a head of steam's going to run right through, and he did. Just well-executed play, blocking at the point of attack, and on the goal line, that's exactly what you need, and Michigan got it. IG Sheet has been perfect this afternoon. Try again, seventh time. Ground level. Stanley out, and there's the hole. And Ricks just plows through, runs through two arm tackles, and really it's no contest as Jack Squire can hold on to Larry Ricks in Michigan. Roars out in front, 49-21. We've got 14-23 left in the fourth quarter. Wilson again in the end zone to receive the kickoff by Sheep. And no run back. Illinois first and 10 at their 20. Let's pick up the action later in the quarter with Illinois in possession. Illinois at the 35-yard line. Eason runs out of it. A want to run. And his throw is intercepted. Tony Jackson on the run back for Michigan. Gets it down to the 29-yard line of Illinois, Tony Jackson. Tony Eason probably should have run this ball. He had broken contain to get outside. There was plenty of room. Tony Osmond wasn't even near him. You see he steps up in the pocket. He's got room. He's on the run. He should have probably run. Instead, sets up, throws it deep over the receiver, and Tony Jackson playing deep center field free safety it was really thrown right at him. He reacted to the ball. Michigan gets the big break. Now they're back in business on their own 28-yard line. Well, there's a chance for more, as you can see, with lots of time left in this fourth quarter and great field position. In Illinois territory, Dunaway on the move. Wolfolk outside. Around the block by Edwards, and he gets to the 25-yard line. That's all. Armstead making the tackle on Wolfo. Thought we might see some new players. B.J. Dickey taking over at quarterback for Steve Smith. Good afternoon. Vince Bean comes in with a play from the sideline. Brockington goes out. Second down. And seven. Try Stanley Edwards, and he gets it over the 25 to about the Illinois 23-yard line, where it'll be third down and five. Stan 
offense, so they have two chances to get the first down here and keep this drive rolling. Dickey throws, and it's incomplete, but a penalty flag is down. Armstead simply made the tackle too soon on Vince Bean. That'll be Michigan's ball at the point of the foul. Same pass pattern that earlier Steve Smith had hit Anthony Carter on. Just a straight post pattern. Vincent Bean goes down the field, turns it up inside, shields the defender with his body, but here Armstead gets him early, and you'll see. There he's contact about five yards before the ball gets there. Armstead had Bean's arms tied behind him. First and goal at the seven-yard line. A break keeps that drive alive for Michigan. Edwards and Wolfolk behind Dickey. It's Edwards up the middle. He slugs off a tackler. Touchdown, Michigan. You don't want to tackle uh, Stanley Edwards up around the shoulders because he'll just run right through you. This is exactly what happened. Fairly good blocking at the point of attack, and, and Stanley just runs right through the tackle when it hits him up on the shoulders. He is just too big and too strong in his upper body strength to tackle him from up there. Haji Sheet trying for 56 on the scoreboard. level Stanley Edwards here's the play running right through Willie Moore's grasp into the end zone touchdown and Michigan really rolling away with it now as I'm sure Mike White in Illinois says we really let this one get away Michigan leading with 11 minutes and 8 seconds left in the fourth quarter 56 to 21 Busy afternoon for Haji Sheik, and he kicks off again. This one dropping right on the goal line to Kirby Wilson, who can only get 15 yards back as Bostic has him wrapped up. Illinois was unable to move the football, so let's pick up action later in the quarter. Again, the blitz for Illinois. Dickey runs out of it and incomplete. A little overthrown intended for Washington. Fourth down and seven. Illinois sending the blitz under this circumstance, trying to pressure Dickey. See if they can get some good field position, but I'm not exactly sure why. Came right up to the middle and forced Dickey out of the pocket, and BJ just on the run overthrew the intended receiver. That's a tough pass to throw, especially when you're on the run, going to the sideline with a lot of pressure behind you. Bracken to punt to Kirby Wilson. The lone setback for Illinois. Penalty flag is thrown down as Wilson is knocked out of bounds. Maybe that's not a penalty flag, although it appears to be. Two of them down. Well, one penalty flag Larry was thrown way back behind the receiver on about the 10 yard line and that was right at the kick and you wonder what went on back there kirby was the only one there and nobody was near him i don't know what he could have done wrong but apparently he did something wrong discussing it with hassle of michigan a 40 yard kick that would be spotted at the 17 yard line but they're bringing it back Michigan will get a first down out of it at the 43 of Illinois. Too many men on the field, an illegal substitution. Credit the mistake to Coach Mike. Did the wrong thing. Somebody didn't report coming in or something like that. Illinois figured maybe they needed 12. <laughs> And it's first down, Michigan, 43-yard line of Illinois. Under eight minutes to play. Hassel fights his way down to the 40-yard line. Neal and Garrity are in there on the offensive line now for Michigan. 
A lot of the changes in the squad. Valordis is the center. 59. Some of these aren't even on my spotting chart. Rich Stringer at a tackle. We've seen Stringer, Stringer playing before. Hassel and Rogers lined up behind Dickey. Rick Rogers runs into a pile and gets it just back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and eight. and 5,000 here in Ann Arbor, and at least half of them are sitting in the sunshine and probably pretty comfortable. The other half in the shadows here have got to be cool. Temperature probably in mid-40s now. On third down and eight. Dickey runs the option. Good cut inside, and that's close to a first down. I think he's got it. unusual things you'll see is is uh, Michigan running a an option here close and Illinois really not defensing it expecting the run but they're coming with blitzes and things looking to stop some kind of a pass or get some things done and um, that's really not the kind of situation you want right now you want to lay back and stop the run because you know Michigan's not going to want to throw the ball so they're going to keep it on the ground even in you know third long situations because you're down inside their territory and you're just looking to use up the clock. Another first down for Michigan. 32-yard line of Illinois. Another option play, and Rick Rogers has some running room. Out of bounds, inside the 15 at the 12-yard line goes Rick Rogers, and that's another first down. They had it caved in right at the line of scrimmage, and perimeter was broken. The pitch uh, immediately, because the end came in, Dickey makes the good decision, and everybody was inside expecting something from the fullback. They get outside with the option. Now, take a look at the linebacker here, Larry. This is a middle linebacker in a three-point stance. Now, that's one of the unusual things you'll see Illinois do, because that doesn't allow them that great mobility left and right. You'd think that he'd want to stand up on two feet, read the play, and go to the flow. Most of Illinois' first downs, however, came in that first quarter when they blitzed Michigan. Hassel goes inside the 10-yard line. After the 20, 21-yard gain by Rick Rogers, Michigan is now at the Illinois 9. He also got tripped by uh, Tom Garrity as he tried to move through. Garrity really didn't make the block, but tangled up the legs. Well, that's... Part of the problem, I, I think, lining up in that three-point stance from a little middle linebacker position, you want to stay low, yeah, but you also want to have your head up, your ability to see the ball and where it's going. When you're in a three-point stance, you've got to stand up first rather than be on the move at the snap. Second down and seven. Rick Rogers has an opening and gets it to the three. Squirtick makes the stop on Rogers. I want that touchdown, Rick yes. Rogers. Could see it. Could see goal line. He didn't get the three. They moved the ball back to the four. Well, there's your, your Butch Wolf folk uh, of the future, maybe. Uh, he's a very, very good back. I don't know whether he'll amass the yardage that Butch Wolf folk did, but he certainly is very, very high on Bo Schembechler's list as running back. 6'2", 200 pounds. It's third down and two at the four. Rogers got the touchdown. Got all four, and Rick Rogers will be an excited young man. Nothing real fancy, Larry, just power football, the point of attack, blocking, and then Rogers takes it over himself, jumps over, keeps his feet going, just sneaks it in, breaks the plane for the touchdown, and Michigan is in the 60s. Looking for 63 on the conversion by Haji Sheep. Just 
like practice. He got it. From field level, Hassel with the block there. Nice block from the fullback. Rockman gets in just barely as Michigan has roared out to a 63-21 lead over the Fighting Illini. Sheik's kick bounced out the back of the end zone. No return. First down at the Illinois 20-yard line. Daryl Smith goes in motion. Eason still throwing and incomplete. In and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Mike Martin. Good defense by Michigan. A five and a half minute scoring drive. That's about the longest one of the day, I think. 12 plays. Rick Rogers going in from seven yards out. And a key to Michigan's second team for the most part. The offensive line, the tight ends, the quarterback and backfield all getting that yardage. And that's great experience for them. Second down and 10. Eason got his man, but it was knocked loose. Jeff Reeves timed his hit perfectly, and he separated Mike Martin from the ball. Now Reeves is going for the ball. He's playing in there at the free safety position, center field. Uh, he sees the ball delivered right down the middle. They're playing a deep center field. When he sees the ball delivered, he reacts to it, and he's going for the ball and at the time, meets Martin, and Martin got the worst of it. Third and 10 for Eason and Illinois from their own 20-yard line. Carlton Rose gets inside, forces Eason out of the pocket, and they got him. Carlton Rose and Doug James combine to knock Eason down inside the 10 kind of pressure that you'd like to see Michigan get earlier. Rose out here, inside route, but look at him fight to get outside. Easton breaks contained, but James helps him out by coming up from the middle, not allowing him to run. So Doug James makes just as good a play out there as Easton is sitting on the seat of his pants saying, where did we all go wrong? Michigan has a couple of receivers deep this time. Evan Cooper and Tony Jackson. Jackson signaling fair catch, cannot get it. Just gets away and the ball takes a great bounce and is down at about the 41 yard line of Michigan. A day for the record books. Anthony Carter with 309 yards total. Returns, receptions, Steve Smith, 340 yards total, a second best game in Michigan history. And of course, the point total, the most that Michigan has ever scored against Illinois. This one for the statisticians. 341 left to play. First down, 40 yard line, Dickey pitches to Rogers. Great block by Hassel, and Rogers runs it up over the 50 for a first down. block was really the key that made the run easy for Rick Rogers. Absolutely. Turns it up inside. There is Hassel knocking off heaven, or rather Larry Mosley. And, uh, well, I tell you, when you're a running back like that and you see that fullback knock the guy down, you say, thank you very much, and head on downfield. First down, Illinois 49-yard line. Again, it's Rogers. Nowhere to go that time. Don Thorpe got through without being blocked or at least without being blocked very well, and he had an arm on Rick Rogers before anything could get started. You can see some of the stadium now as the seats are emptying. I figure this one's under control, 63-21. Rick Rogers having himself a pretty good day also as Michigan's tailbacks are eating the Illini up. On the option, Dickey picks his way inside for about a yard. That's all there was. Pretty quick coverage by Illinois' number 97, Garrett. Third 
down and nine. Tough day for the Michigan cheerleaders, too, since they do back semis off the wall here for every point the Wolverines score after each touchdown. So it's, I don't even want to think how many they did today. Washington makes the catch and the carry down to the seven yard line of Illinois. I'll tell you, that's a real good catch by Fred Brockington. He's been much maligned as a receiver by some people, but I'll tell you what, he makes an outstanding catch here down the sidelines, lays out, cradles the ball in, in close, one on one with. Armstead, and boy, Armstead's had a rough day today having to cover those people as General Bo, I'm sure, is a little bit more pleased at what's happening here late than what was going on early. Rocking's in a big play receiver. His first catch for 25 yards. This one goes for 41 yards. And Michigan knocking on the door in the final two minutes. Touchdown. Touchdown. Dickey. Is that Hassel? If they'll let him go, I'll know it's Tom Hassel. Good play in that they fake the run, and Hassel goes out like he's going to block, turns it inside, and then just heads for the corner. He's wide open. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. <laughs> Finally, Dickey delivers it, and Hassel, waiting there for it, says, hey, all right, I got myself a touchdown. And that's good to see, because Hassel has played a long, long time here, and you know, he never gets that much chance, but here against Illinois, he does, and he makes good on it. Ali Haji Sheik makes good on the conversion for the 10th time this afternoon with a minute 43 left to play. It's Michigan 70, Illinois 21. Sheep with a Michigan record, 10 extra points, will kick off again. His leg's got to be getting tired. Kirby Wilson takes it just inside the end zone, and Kyle Kett chases him out of bounds at about the 11-yard line. Hard to remember that at the half, this was 28-21 Michigan, and a game that was very much up for grabs. And also, hard to remember that Back there in the first quarter, it was 21-7 Illinois. On a 63 to nothing route. 42 here in the second half. Dickey leading that last touchdown drive. First and 10, 12-yard line for Illinois. They run the draw, and it works. Joe Curtis. Still on his feet, out over the 25 to about the 28-yard line. It'll be first down. Tim Anderson made the tackle. Tony Eason looking to the sideline for instructions. There's the drive engineered by Dickey. 60 yards, five plays. B.J. passing to Hassel. running play. I want to keep the clock going, I think. Curtis dives up short of the 35-yard line. A minute five left. Second down and three. Although they are huddling rather quickly. It is not as if Illinois is trying to run out the clock and keep Michigan from scoring again. Eason goes to the air. He got his man. Passmore <laughs> is the receiver, and that's got to be the most appropriate name on the back of any Illinois jersey. First and 10, 38 seconds to play. Illinois has the ball at its own 42-yard line. They have no chance in this one. Little complete pass to fullback Mike Murphy, and he is out to about the 49. 52 passes for Eason, 30 completions, 380 yards. 
13 seconds to play. Nine seconds as the crowd counts it off. Last play of the game, perhaps. Eason keeps it, and that will enable the clock to run out, and it does. As Michigan pounds Illinois into submissions, 70 to 21. Mike White had an early lead and had Michigan on the run, but simply couldn't keep them there. Smith with another great afternoon. Anthony Carter with a great afternoon. And Michigan left with two games to play and two victories necessary as they go to Lafayette, Indiana next week and come back home against Ohio State the following Saturday. Larry Adderley for Jim Brandstetter inviting you to join us next week as the Wolverines travel to West Lafayette, Indiana to take on the Boilermakers of Purdue. Once again, the final score this afternoon, Michigan 70, Illinois 21. The executive producer of On TV Sports is John Tuohy. Our associate producers are Michael Smith and William Glenn. Our production assistant, Carolyn Mellon. This has been a sports presentation of National Subscription Television. Thank you.